Legion's panel session. We've got a cast of many, many characters up here. Um, so I'm just going to hand it over to the panel because many people, lots of talking, good time, and you're off. Build on to build on what had been running over a few years, which were the Bard camps, and it's our role as ambassadors for a particular region to be the ones to be the outreach for National Digital Forum, and to think of what we can do for you as members in those regions. This year we've rerun bar camps and what's, mostly what's going to be covered by each of the ambassadors briefly is what they got out of the, their bar camps that they ran. And then after we've done that, hopefully we'll have time to talk about what's next. So I'll go from the opposite end to Amanda. Um, I'm Amanda Kerno. Thank you. Um, I'm from Massey University in Palmerston North. Um, and as ambassador, I cover um, Horofanua, Palmerston North, Whanganui, even Taranaki. Um, what we got up to in the bar camp this year in July, we had a session on 3D printing and we had a presentation from Bronwyn Holloway Smith, um, who presented last year at NDF, I believe. Um, and we also had um, Wikipedia editing from Mike Dickerson, which was, those were both the really good presentations that we had. Um, but I actually really want to use this time to pitch an idea to you. Um, so the idea is um, called Pimp My Museum. It's sort of taking things into the future a bit. Um, it's a mashup of a couple of ideas. So it's leveraging the skill share that NDF have going, as well as um, an idea I heard about recently where you have um, a bunch of people come together um, for a weekend. And what they would do is they would have a museum that, or archive or library that needs a bit of TLC and they would brainstorm like on a Friday night about what needs to be done. You would have experts from different areas, so you might have a museum person to come along look at the uh, collections and the displays. And then you would, might have someone looking at maybe the library or the website um, and you would actually get those people in like a, like a working bee over the weekend, they're donating their time, so it's kind of a volunteer thing, to actually make some real differences in in a particular institution or a particular organisation. So the benefits there would be getting the Skillshare people out into the regions and also um, the people in the regions could volunteer their time so they would learn from the experts and um, the museum itself or whatever would also um, have, have a, um, a benefit at the end. Um, so like it might, um, their displays might be improved or their website might be improved. So there'd be really concrete um, outcomes for everybody involved. So I'd be really interested to hear your ideas if you think that's worthwhile pursuing. Thanks. Um, good morning, my name is Hira and I'm from the University of Auckland Libraries and Learning Services. I'm an assistant librarian there. Um, Excuse me, can you speak in the museum? And then mic. So I'm, I'm from University of Auckland, li um, Libraries and Learning Services. I hosted a um, bar camp for the Auckland region um, in July. Um, we had, for the morning session, we, have, we had David Sanderson from um, Auckland War Memorial um, to talk about digital preservation, which was really good. And um, we've had quite a few good um, feedback from that as well. Um, in the afternoon session, we had some agendas that were created on that day. So um, we talked about things like copyrights, um, TPPA, um, so digitization, selection, appraisals. Um, from that, um, everyone quite enjoyed it and some were saying it would be nice to have a few more of the bar camp and also um, I've been asked to say push back to NDF for practical advocacy to help local institutions to work together. Um, Nat National Register of Digital Initiatives, to, so we know what others are doing on regional and national level. So what they want is they want something, a bar camp, but um, another kind of, like an NDF, but more um, uh, 
a channel that um, we could talk in a national level so we know what we're doing, not just in our region, but over the whole of national um, glam sectors. So yes, that's my feedback. Hi, I'm Meredith Rimmer. I work for the Nelson Provincial Museum and I'm the NDF ambassador for the Nelson, Tasman, Marlborough, top of the South Island region. And I just wanted to paint a picture for you about what's happening in the digital sphere of that region because I know we all come from um, loads of different places in New Zealand. Um, so some of the neat things that are happening in um, the Nelson, Tasman region, um, there's the Prow website, which has been going on for about seven years, and there's going to be a specific presentation in this room at 2 p.m. about keeping that collaborative project going, and it's a website where people can contribute their stories and their memories and photographs of the Nelson, Tasman region and historic events. Kete Tasman, which is um, run by the Tasman District Council and the Tasman Libraries, is a really good Kete in that Kete suite that this country has. Um, the Nelson Provincial Museum has a large-scale and long-term digitization project of our glass plate negative collection. Um, it's been going for about five years now. It's about 75% of the way through now. Um, and the total of the glass plates um, is about 160,000 glass plates, and 50,000 of those are now available online um, through the museum's collection online database, and also it's just recently started being harvested by Digital NZ as well, which we've been really, really thankful that we've been able to pool that resource. Um, and I also just wanted to mention that the museum, the Nelson Provincial Museum, has been playing around with its Facebook page as a way of trying to experiment with engagement and I think we need to experiment more with what we're doing. Um, I asked around um, my region to say what sort of supports needed, um, how, where are people feeling they're a little bit weak um, with regards to digital cultural heritage and I got similar things coming back to me so I just wanted to just briefly bring them up. Um, digital preservation, there's a concern that these are small museums and galleries and archives where you've got two or three people working doing everything in a lot of these places. Um, the Nelson Provincial Museum is one of the largest employers as a museum in the region. Um, the libraries are fairly well supported, but the other places are actually really tiny, and they're trying really hard to digitally preserve their things, but they need to keep track of all the changing technologies into the future, and I think there's a, a fear or a bit of a dauntingness with regards to that. Um, there's a desire to work strategically across the region digitally to make sure we maybe digitize all the letters of a certain period or something to just come together more collaboratively and it makes a better sell um, to get funding. And oral histories also came up a lot in my region. People are concerned that they've got stacks and stacks of magnetic tapes that need to be turned into digital files. Um, the Nelson Provincial Museums just recently digitized all of their magnetic tapes, um, but there's many others out there in other archives and um, museums in the region that are still sitting as cassette tapes. Um, and then also a worry about not collecting new oral histories, that that work isn't being done and we're losing stories. And I just want to quickly say my vision for our future in the Nelson, Tasman, Marlborough region is I think we're actually getting quite good at capturing the content, the digital content of um, our cultural heritage, but we haven't yet moved on to that engaging and playing and using it. We've stored it, we've caught it, but now we need to do something with it in a creative way. So that's my, my wish for the future. Hi, I'm Joanna Stropinski. I work at Canterbury Museum and I'm the Canterbury rep. Um, we had a very successful bar camp this year. Adrian Kingston came to talk to us about cataloging digital objects as part of the Skillshare. We had sessions that ranged from people just talking about projects they had to getting practical advice on maybe the look and feel of their website, and we even had a mini hackathon break out in the corner for some people. Um, through that, we identified a series of practical skills that we'd all like to learn, and Seismic has taken that up at the University of Canterbury, and once a month we run practical skills workshops. Our next one happens to be tomorrow, when it's on textual analysis, so if you find yourself in Christchurch, you should come along. Um, while our bar camp was very well attended, 
I'm pretty sure every single person was from Christchurch. So one of the goals for the future will be to host it physically in a different different location in one of the smaller towns in Canterbury. <coughs> Hi, I'm Harley from Tauranga City Libraries, and we ran our, our local bar camp in August. We had people from the Bay of Plenty and the Waikato and, and neighbouring regions, or even though we had just 18 people come. Some of the um, themes were around social media, different platforms they can use, engagement, and copyright issues. We had Matt McGregor from Creative Commons come and talk to us in the afternoon. It was really well received. One of the projects that we um, we're launching at that time was was called um, Tauranga Transcriptions. We our library was given a collection of World War One letters, which we scanned and we put up on our kit there. But then we also created uh, Google Documents that sat beside them that were open and editable, didn't require any signing in. And then we wanted to encourage our community to. Um, take those letters, open up the Google document beside it and, and transcribe it. So we we launched that. That idea was um, also uh, picked, a, uh, picked up a few ears of the people who are at the conference and so maybe that'll be repeated around the place. I'm very careful not to call it crowdsourcing though. <laughs> and I, I, I apologise if I have called it that in the past. But um, yeah, it's just, it's we thought it's a great way to get some of our um, older people in Tauranga who can still read handwriting and want to be involved in commemorating and, and had maybe even fathers, grandfathers from the First World War and, um, and you know, weren't necessarily digi as digitally literate as, they, as, um, as you know, younger generations. So we're, we're, we're launching that and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm Sabine Weberbeard. I work for the Far North. Sorry, I'm Sabine Weberbeard. I work for the Far North District Libraries, and I am uh, closer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> third time. I'm Sabine Weberbeard. I work for the Far North District Libraries. I'm the systems librarian there, and I am the Northland ambassador for National Digital Forum. As the Far North. Use the library. <laughs> I'm the systems librarian. I don't shout at people. <laughs> um, okay, shall I start again? Okay, I'm Sabine. I work for the Far North District Libraries. Um, I'm the systems librarian there, and um, I'm the Northland ambassador for the National Digital Forum. As Far North or Northland is quite populated only in different areas, I had the privilege that I was allowed to run six workshops in all our six libraries. Now, I did heavy advertising on Facebook's personal emails. I contacted people, everything like this. But overall, I think I only had all together about 12 people turn up. Now, I think it is a great start. I came up with different um, concepts, how we can do difference. Now, people did not know what the National Digital Forum is. So mostly I had to explain what can be done, what it is, and how we, as Far North District Libraries, I took ownership of that, um, can help with facilitating things. Um, I wrote a few things down, and forgive me, I'm reading them out. Um, out of all the sessions, the topics came up was ebook publishing, copyright issues, computing for seniors, facilitating skills, Mirai Skillshare program, social media for museums and archives to increase increase visitor numbers, empowering use, increasing museums, digital public access, mentoring program for film, movie, electronic and digital interested youth. So I have, over the whole two weeks, I had those programs, kept everybody in contact with each other. I have written to people and showed them all um, the links to the different sites where there are um, videos about things they had approached up and I have also um, more or less said like I will come back and make a proper report and let everybody know. People who had signed up didn't turn up. People who didn't sign up turned up. So I have included in all my con like emails at the end I have included everybody who turned up and didn't turn up just to keep it all going. Um, 
I do think that I have just started something. I would like to keep on going because it's, I think, a huge task to actually get the regions, especially far north, up to not standard, but actually keep it going with things that are going on. We often miss out with things, and I think we, yeah, um, need to all work together to just let people know what is going on. Hi everyone, I'm Amy Watling. I work at the Alexander Turnbull Library in the uh, online research services leader role there. Um, I've been the Wellington ambassador, and the Wellington regional ambassador, which is an interesting concept, um, for two years. And um, the position will be vacant next year or whatever it is that we decide to do. Um, so I've had um, a really interesting experience being the Wellington um, Regional Ambassador because I think the program was conceived as a, you know, there's lots of um, talent and interest concentrated in certain areas. And then there's people who are working very hard um, and there's two of them or there's five of them um, and uh, about... Um, skill sharing and, and getting people to those or maybe that there's a larger group and people have their own interests but Wellington you know is could Wellington be said to be a region in this context but I've had a great time and I the first year I ran a very pure bar camp um, very much a um, I did not set any topics. I was, you know, <laughs> ready for whatever came. And um, I got a lot of librarians to that one, and I had to convince a few people not to leave um, in the first half an hour because they were, they were expecting to be presented too. Uh, and so that was really fun. <laughs> um, that was a great session, very lively. Um, and lots of mutual learning at that one. There was not a lot of questions coming up that there wasn't, one, not one or two answers to in that group. And I ran a, a sell-out session of 80, um, which is more to do with my presenter, who is Victoria Leachman, who ran a very practical how-to copyright for, um, for the glam sector how to clear copyright on your collections and she had worksheets and she had homework and everybody responded really well to that um, and uh, and it was really good and I still I still use what I learned in that session um, so the next year I, I unfortunately decided I'd get really ambitious and I um, I've been very interested for about a year and I know I'm a latecomer to this I've um, been very very interested in that um, emerging academic area of digital humanities and um, the use of our data and our metadata um, and how uh, GLAM sectors, well really LAM um, at this stage but hopefully the G will come along, um, are engaging with the academic um, communities on um, the use of our collections in a, in a completely untraditional way, um, in a way that um, really doesn't go anywhere near the object. Um, to me, and it's just, I find it really exciting. Um, and the textual analysis that you mentioned, and topic modelling, um, all kinds, uh, and it covers such a wide range of material. And I really, I decided, well, this year I could run another, I could run some more sort of 101 level stuff, but I really want to get into this. Um, so, but I thought other people in, the, in Wellington would not know you know, would be new to digital humanities and how it connects um, to uh, to the glam sector. So I decided I'd do an, an expert session, which was the bar camp, and the 101 session, which was a seminar. And I got three wonderful speakers, Sydney Shep, Thomas Kunsk, and um, Dr. James Smithies, um, who were very generous with their time. And I got 20 people, um, despite advertising my heart out um, so that was a that was a real learning experience and I think what happened there was that um, a lot of people I think saw it and went doesn't relate to my work you know um, and it which is a shame because the whole point of that session was I, I was trying to tell people this does relate to your work this is coming this is interesting you need to know the the building blocks and it was a great session um, and I learned, <laughs> I learned a lot, and the people who were there learned a lot. Interestingly, the expert session had 25, 
And um, I'd only expected a small group for that because we were, I really wanted to get people who were in it up to their elbows and could really talk nuts and bolts with each other. So bringing the academics and the, um, and the GLAMS people, the GLAMS technical staff together. Um, and we, it, a lot of that um, was, still, was still very building blocks. It, it focused around infrastructure. We were talking about um, delivery of data, open standards, um, uh, but also broader things like funding models, um, uh, support, um, se- um, establishing centres, leadership. Um, so that was really, really uh, valuable and people who had heard about each other met each other and you know other things like that happened. So I, I was really happy with that. Um, and I think uh, I would really like to thank um, uh, James Smithies, um, Diane Weatherhead and Leith Harhoff for their support um, because it does take a bit to get off the ground. You know, these, all these sessions that we've run, you know, they all sound pretty simple at the end of it, but it's amazing how much time you put in at the beginning. Thank you. So I'm Alison Brown and I work at the University of Otago Library as the Digital Services Coordinator and I'm the Ambassador for Otago and when we met up at our training day I quickly realised Southland had been forgotten so I thought oh I'll pick up Southland too and so it became that interesting communication across two large regions which because of other things I'm involved in seemed to be a normal habit. And I spent a lot lot of time because previously to that I had run bar camps on behalf of NDF. It became about how do I communicate to other areas of the GLAM that I don't have ways to communicate with. So finding people within Dunedin that could pass on the communication and say, oh, this is for you too. It's not just the librarian telling you what to do. Then I also, based on those previous experience with other bar camps, I was really thinking about giving people ideas before they turned up. Because quite often when people turn up to bar camps, they expect to present something, they expect to be experts. And it's about going, hey, here's some possible topics, but if you've got a question or something you're trying to work through, this is the time to bring it along and talk about it. And within the bar camp I actually ran, we also threw in some five minutes on, which someone has pointed out to me ended up being more than five minutes each. And it dealt with things like tools that you can use for social media and gathering your data. We had a robot brought from the Invercargill Public Library that students can code and that was lots of fun. We also had the copyright and open access manager from the University of Otago do a quiz and everyone discovered how little they knew about copyright. So that helped say, you might think you know about it, but if you're struggling with these questions, here's an opportunity to run a session and have someone that's delving into copyright talk about it. And then I already had figured out the overall structure and what topics possibly could be covered, but then it was that whole thing of adjusting it now, what are we gonna go with and being flexible. We did have James Smithies come to our bar camp and run a workshop in the afternoon. I purposely asked James because the conversation around digital humanities is evolving and it would be good to support that, especially some of the larger institutions in Dunedin, to support a lot of the researchers through the University of Otago and other research bodies. And so that did attract a couple of people and did lend itself to the point that James was off talking to one of our academics about setting up digital humanities at Otago, possibilities, maybe, and it's just trying to have those conversations. And from the day when we had the roundup at the end of what did you get, what do you want, more than one person went, we want to keep the conversation going. And luckily I'd already had conversations like, we want to run meetups. We don't know if they'll work or not, but we want to run them. And we've since had one. I need to actually use Meetup software application to hopefully run in the next, another one in the next couple of weeks. And part of the reason to use that beyond emails is Dunedin has a huge growing coding community. And there's a lot of people that are basing their businesses from across the world in Dunedin. 
And I don't know if we'll ever attract any of the coders along, but you never know and see what happens. So for me, some of the things I are reflecting on, but what I'm still struggling with, even just focusing in Dunedin, it doesn't seem that large, but there are a disparity in skills and knowledge between individuals and institutions, and it can also be individuals in institutions. And also the collaboration between the institutions. And often these conversations happen at a really high level, but not at an operational level. And if you want things to actually happen and change and evolve and play around with things, it's the operational people that are talking to the community, can talk to the people that have their stories that want to share. So it's trying to bring those things together. So I don't think it's just at a New Zealand national level that needs to happen. And so they were the, my key things that I'm building on. And one of in the, also in the back of my mind is how do I support Southland and how do those two regions work together? Does it mean we need a Southland ambassador or is it something we evolve towards? Because we want to make sure those in the smaller institutions and museums and libraries all feel like they've got a place. They don't have to travel a long distance to attend these things. And I did find that Previously, we did have more of them. This time around, not so much. But it was good. It was a great experience. And each time, it's a learning experience. And so all of us have produced reports of what we got out of them. We're also, what we're not covering today, putting in a shared document. So hopefully, you guys can bring some resources. And I might throw in the link to Richard White's copyright quiz for those that didn't see it on Twitter on the day that it happened and you can test your knowledge. And so I'm going to, before we hand out for questions and requests of what you think we should be doing as your ambassadors, I just want to reflect back on some of the things that was posed in the AGM this morning. So I'm going to look to Amanda. <laughs> well, you raised it last night with Chris, so. And then we raised it at the AGM of what more can NDF do to support the ambassadors, to support our members to evolve and become more in what we're doing with our collections and engaging our communities. Can you? <laughs> Uh, right, so we sort of talked about, um, well, communication is really key, um, getting people to talk to each other from different sectors and different associations even. Um, so, you know, knowing, this morning we sort of talked about how, um, you know, not overlapping with conferences is quite important, um, and sort of like, you know, splitting the vote type thing, but also making sure that people are aware of the key the other key people to talk to and the other kind of key events. So don't have bar camps for NDF and then maybe something else for ARANs at the same sort of time. Um, what else did we talk about? There's also a number of national bodies, which I cannot remember right now what they're called, yeah. where they're actually already going out to the regions. And I think in museums, oh. that's one of those examples. And it would be good for NDF to help the ambassadors coordinate with all those different national bodies that already have a mandate to go out and talk about um, preservation. And so there's, there's a few conversations around we want preservation. Well, there's already bodies within the National Library. Yes, it's a small team, but how can NDF help the ambassadors to maybe get something going? And we didn't really talk about it, but a couple of us have talked about finding ways to not just run meetups, but running events throughout the year. Is there a way that maybe, like with Victoria, where she ended up going around the different regions and presenting the same sort of workshop, to continue that going so it's not all about an individual ambassador in a region or regions, trying to come up with these themselves, even if they're talking to others, because there may be others that someone in NDF or someone in one of the national institutions know about that would help meet that need. And then it could just be this person over a week goes to four regions. And then it just helps building up those skills and then hopefully bringing those into those sessions that would normally not go to a bar camp, don't think it's in their job, 
but if they went along, they would realise, yes, this is what you should be thinking about in your job. I think one of the things is having purposeful conversations and making the time to just get together face to face. And it's something that through our just our working society, we don't do much. But I think spe specifically with this creative digital stuff, you've got to throw ideas out there and um, talk with each other and see each other and see, hey, what I'm working on, might that matches with what you were talking about. That's amazing. Maybe we can turn that into something in three years' time. But it's got to start from somewhere. And I think one of the things that I really enjoyed at the end of our bar camp Everyone, again, like I think everyone on this table, had that feeling that people wanted to continue those conversations in the region. And you, we, we did a meet-up as well um, at a collective, a um, Bridge Street Collective cafe-type group working meeting place. Um, again, I was trying to attract those coder IT people, just hang out where they are, and maybe osmosis will happen. Um, because, and like, um, with you, Amy, you were saying that you were attracting... I wrote it down. Glam technical staff. Mm. I, I don't have any glam technical <laughs> staff who are focused on the creative side of the glam industry. We've got the hardware, software technical staff, but not people who are doing that creative app building, website development type thinking um, in, in my region. Um, I actually had, and I've forgotten about that, quite a few people mentioned to me, but yeah, forgive me. Why is nothing ever coming like National Digital Forum to Northland or Far North? So the idea is still that I will run a seventh workshop in the Fungaray Library and maybe get a skill share person in. And then we invite everybody who came to on those um, Far North sessions to that, just as like a little start and maybe see where we can go from there then. So questions? It's not a question so much as offering a service. Um, you were just talking about the outreach services available. I work for one of them, and we're always, um, I work for National Services to Pairangi, which is the museum sector support team based here. There are also outreach services at National Library and Archives New Zealand. We're always really keen to work with people, um, and we, we all also run workshops regionally. So um, let's talk about that because we can help you, we can partner, we can promote, we can, you know, get expertise. So we're really happy to help. I just wanted you to know I'm here. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, Philippa from Museums Aotearoa. Just following up on that conversation, um, which, which you mentioned from the AGM this morning and what Tamara has just said about national services, just listening to what you've said as, as feedback from the regional bar camps, it seems to me as though different regions do have slightly different needs. Um, and some might have more available skills on the tech side and some more on the, the content management side, some more on the creative side. So I think probably what would be most helpful would be some way of, of bringing that, um, that feedback into some sort of national kind of bring it together and see what are the national needs. The, the, the reason that, one of the reasons that Victoria Leachman's copyright sessions were so popular is that they do cross over the people who are interested in the digital, the people who are interested from the, the collections or audience engagement side of things. So there's, there's a lot of crossover, but there are probably other topics which are much more specific to some particular subgroups of, of this broader GLAMS and some which are specific to the NDF type community and others which are specific perhaps to the library community or the museum or the gallery community. So I think the important thing is to have the conversations and to make sure that um, the, the major kind of institutional players are, are really involved. Um, both at local level and regional level, but really important for you, who are the people who are talking to those groups on the ground, to feed that back somehow. Uh, each of the uh, ambassadors need to do a report at the end of a bar camp and they talk about how many people they got, what sectors they came from, um, what they talked about and things. So we do do a report, so I don't know whether that, and that goes to the, um, the person that looks after the ambassadors, so I'm not sure how they would perhaps disseminate that.
I am from Palm North Library. I am not a librarian. I work as an analyst. But this is my second year here. So I see a lot of uh, hard work put in by each community and a um, lot of initiatives taken. But again, as I just hear, like you reported back on the output uh, outcome of the event. So what I'm looking at is, uh, I don't know whether it's a problem, but I see like uh, it's uh, there's a need to standardize uh, the steps that are taken so that like there's a um, um, better use of best practices. And like, so if I see like, okay, uh, for Palms North, this is a challenge. So if I have a location where I can see, okay, which community has done this, so I can like communicate with them and say like, oh, how do you do this? So they'll say, oh, we tried this, 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 and then we can share from them. And I have come to this conference just to like see what's happening and talk to people. I have some problem that I am looking for some solutions. So this is a great opportunity to mingle and share. But uh, I'm an expert in Excel, more intermediate level. So if somebody comes and asks for, can you help me with this report? So I can just do it in a within a minute. So again. Uh, one of my colleagues, Leith Oros, like he started a very good concept of skill sharing. And last year, like I went for that sh uh, short dating. Like you talk about what is your expertise, and people just spoke to me about how they digitize. They are expert in that, but again, nobody spoke to me about what they want from me. So the point is, like we have wealth of knowledge and expertise. The only worry for me is, like, do we have a structure which enables everybody to use that uh, strength? and like minimize the weaknesses. So uh, I'm sure like they're thinking ahead on this, but I just want to know like if there is, uh, will, will that come into picture soon or? Um, I, I don't have the answer to your question, but I do think it's a really good point. And there is that skill share set up, which I don't know if you've seen it. There's part of NDF. Um, you can get it off the website. It's uh, maybe a half page. It looks lovely. And it lists maybe 10 people at the most, experts in their field. They're probably, they're all here at the conference and they, um, they offer to come to your area and help you um, formally in whatever area that they're experts in, um, as well as offering other support. And that's lovely it's very high level support and maybe what you were suggesting is adding on a, a second tier of support where um, for example at my museum we've got that um, big glass plate negative digitization project we hope that we are pretty good and could offer some really good practical advice on setting up a project like that so maybe something um, a second tier not we're not going to fly over to to your place, but we'll certainly have a conversation um, and offer advice and support. So I think that's a really, really good point. I think in that regard, it becomes a way to, you know, you could follow up with, hey, do you want to connect via Skype? Or do you have any documentation you can share with me? And I think from the other side that if you're looking to work on something you haven't worked before and you're trying to figure out your infrastructure, use actually the NDF Lumio discussion forum to say, I'm about to work on this. Has anyone have worked on this? So you get people that are trying to look for solutions and then you can respond to that issue they're having or that experience go, hey, you should look at this and just provide that. So make the most of the discussion forums. Currently it's it's for members, but it's that's generally how I've been contacted through different forums you know I'll put my hand up if you're looking at different repository platforms and figuring out which one over the other one with open repositories I've got lots of experience but I don't think I could do Skillshare but contact me so I think yeah it's that lesser list but also saying to you as members if you're planning to do something share it on Lumio if you can and hopefully someone can give you five years ago we went through this this is our big lesson out of it and we found this tool really good. So communication. So I was just going to say, I think your idea about having a, like a second tier register of expertise in the local region is much less intimidating than having some quite high powered person from Wellington come along. Um, that would be a really good idea. And then you could say, oh, I'm doing a di digitization project, whatever. I just need a camera. Recommend a camera to me, you know, just something small. It doesn't need to be big and doesn't need to be, you know, what is my strategy for digitization? So that's a really good idea. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, 
hi Sabine. Um, I just wondered if you could tell me the kind of challenges you have in the far north. Um, well, I don't know where to start, and I don't mean that in any way. It's no. I had been very successful with putting stuff on the local Facebook pages where I had heaps of conversation going um, and people really interested and asking questions. Most people took, I think, the unconference or bar camp as the biggest issue. They couldn't understand, so I, at the end, changed everything just to like a, a workshop. Let's have a workshop if you have ideas, just bring them along. Um, I think it's connecting to people, it's, con it's, it's like keeping, hmm. I had, okay, I had one lady come to one of the workshops um, who says like, look, I really like what you're doing there, would you be prepared to come to one of our Marais? And I said like, I think I need to clear it with my managers, but I think we can do that. Because she said like, I don't think that any of those people I know from the Marais would ever come to any of those workshops because it doesn't, first of all, you keep it in the library. It's very, yeah, not very comfortable for many Maori people. Um, it's a bit of a tourist spot. So um, I think this grassroots thing, I really like using it, I think grassroots. We have to be in far north, far more grassroots and go out. I think us librarians in the far north have a, I think, yeah, we have, we have to do, I believe, like more, yeah, <coughs> do more by going outwards. And I have spoken to my manager um, often about this. I think we need to be more, more ambassadors for the far north, not just National Digital Forum, just ambassadors just to try to get information out and connect people, I think. And I'm not trying to say anything negative. It's just, this is just my, my ideas as, I have to say that I've run into constant issues with that term bar camp and I mean I'm not saying everyone at the Otago bar camp had a problem with it but it's like what why am I sending staff to this foot so it's it's trying to find a brand of having gatherings and whether it's a workshop whether and just not just resting on hey this has worked all right in the past we should keep doing it it's just asking that constant question and responding and it may be that continuation of for some regions it works for others it doesn't how can we support a variety of events and activities happening in the different regions um, I definitely agree with the questioning of the name of bar camp or on conference that's definitely really confusing to both management and people coming outside they just they don't understand what it is just workshop or meetup would be better it's literally you have to come to one before you actually understand what it means yeah i just completely dropped the term from my publicizing um and just called it a gathering and also i found the term national digital forum uh, doesn't mean anything unless you know what it means so i had to put a lot of kind of filler things cultural heritage digital gathering sort of filler words so that it made sense in in my publicity and in my email and when I was talking to people about um, what we were sort of trying to offer if you're in the know it makes sense but if you're not it, it doesn't make any sense at all um, yeah um, any more burning questions ideas random concepts <laughs> Um, I'm Lee Reed from the Dunedin City Council and I know that we don't kind of fit in the glam sector as such, um, especially my role on the digital services team leader. So um, I'm in charge of the information management side. I also maintain archives, our intranet and our GIS. Um, so my role is quite different from what a lot of people here have to do, but also it means that I've got fingers in a lot more of pies than what most people do. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I might be doing five or six different roles. Um, when I first attended a bar camp, I found that the best thing I got out of it was I actually know more than I thought I did, um, and that I could provide a lot more assistance and help to people 
Um, so it was really good for me from that perspective that I got to meet people that I didn't necessarily get to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis who were in my industry. And I think you need to really focus on that and raise that level as well because a lot of people will think that this kind of thing is targeted at specific people in specific areas. Um, and I had a concern about coming to this um, conference that I might not fit in, that it's a little bit you know, out of my league, that kind of stuff. But I've found... I've been pleasantly surprised and um, yeah, I just think maybe don't target it so much for those specific glam areas to look outside the square, especially if you're looking for coders and stuff like that. IT people, the IT geeks won't go near this if it's glams. So maybe, I don't know, as, a, as an idea, probably spread your net a little bit wider, looking for skill sets rather than specific kind of industries. I think if you've got um, if you've got a wealth of um, expertise and different types of people in your organisation or in your sector, then you're kind of safe. But in the regions, we don't have that, and yeah, we absolutely do need to look outside collaboratively, not just with the galleries, the libraries, the archives, and the museums, but with all the other um, organisations and businesses in the region, and just try and find those joint. Um, joint collaborations where everyone's going to win because we don't have the resources or the skills to do an absolutely A1 awesome job. We've got the passion, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, going to need help. Um, with my um, bar camp conference gathering thing that I organized, I specifically in the morning I did um, presentations and I specifically asked IT people to come and present because I knew they weren't going to come just to be part of the afternoon session but I knew they'd come if I asked them to present and they did and it was wonderful and one of them even brought a, um, a virtual reality headset that we all had a go on in the afternoon and that was really really fun too. I think there's a lot of um, untapped potential between people who can who have the technological know-how and who, who can code and create create stuff digitally and then us who've got the content and the passion and we've really got to work creatively and hard to get them together um, and it's a money um, are they a business we're not a business how, how can we get that um, working together has anyone else had any collaborations between external app developers or website developers or has it all been in-house anyone It's already on. Hi. Hi, I'm Bex. Um, I'm here self-funded, um, but one of my projects at the moment is for Regional Facilities Auckland, a um, council-funded entity. So we have a series of business units that give experiences for people in Auckland, like Auckland Zoo, Auckland Art Gallery, and so on. Um, and I've met some great librarians from Auckland, Auckland libraries today um, at the conference. Um, I don't know how other regions work, but what's been um, quite interesting for me is that, and somebody at Auckland Art Gallery said it to me, well, it doesn't matter what budget line it comes out of. It's all ratepayers' money anyway, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, um, because we are a completely separate entity. Um, so this, you know, I'm an IT person and I haven't thought to come here, but probably I would say... Um, for other sort sort of entities, yeah, those connections and like you have done, reaching out to IT people. We currently have um, a program of work. We have um, an open source vendor doing um, an API for us um, for our first Auckland Art Gallery. Will be the first website for it. But I know there are other projects that my colleagues within RFA and also a council are working on around. Um, other digital channels, and, and there's just, I mean, probably Auckland's a bad example because it's so huge, um, but there might be even in the smaller areas, there's all these pockets of projects and money that comes even not from council but other donors, and so our plan at RFA is to slowly, slowly, as we have a success, celebrate that and hope that people will come and be attracted towards us and instead of maybe building a microsite with some money they got for an advertising campaign out of a marketing budget, that they might come and reuse our capability. So, yeah, another IT person. I think I've out of that couple of conversations, I've now got my favourite thing to say, bring code and content together. We probably I'd, have one more time for one I'd, more. I'd just like to, to really um, support the idea of working with councils. And, no, seriously, because, because the councils are primarily funding all the glam sector, 
and and they've got the expertise on in house a lot of the time, and so working with the people who actually do the back of house stuff for the councils, as well as working with the front facing institutions like the libraries and museums and galleries is is really really important. So yeah, definitely work with councils, please. Thanks thanks for that comment. One of the one of the themes in our particular camp was that we had people from quite a few different regions there. They often felt um, crowded from from high levels, they felt they were working in risk averse environments. And if we can get councils talking to other councils saying, hey, what are you doing in your council about promoting your collections, get, um, you know, getting new things started, um, then maybe we can start to break down some of that um, conservative risk averse uh, inf um, spirit, if you like, that the creative people are chafing underneath with, uh, so, you know, spread spread that word and get them thinking, yeah, that's that's a cool thing for councils well, to do. I think we're, it's going to come upon us before we know it. I just took from Andy Neal um, yesterday morning how he said it's going to be upon us before we know it. I think, you know, the technological advances are coming like a tsunami and, you know, in two years' time we will be having completely different conversations potentially about the types of ways we can experience our cultural heritage and it will be real. We we'll really will be doing these neat things. Can I ask a question? So I just want to know, like, um, do we have any benchmarking? Like, what I'm interested in is, like, uh, for my community or my uh, where I work, like, how can I say that I'm at a particular standard in terms of uh, uh, digital innovation? So I'm not trying to, like, bring in the competition, but I just want to see, like, of all the communities, like which community is doing better, and like it's more like looking at uh, positive deviations and see, like, okay, they're doing better because they're doing X, Y, Z. So, is there any benchmarking or a way to know, like, where we stand or what is our target? Because we are putting in effort year after year, and they talk about dig digitization, it's so many thousand, they have done 50,000. So, I don't know, like, is it good, bad, or what are we heading to? Um, I'm not aware of any benchmarking system. I think it's just talking to each other and general reputation that people seem to be better in area, some areas and worse in others. Maybe that's another thing to share. We use this standard. Well, I mean, there are sta there are da sort of data collection yeah. standards and things that are available. I know National Services to Parangi have all this, the standards listed on the website and they're available in other places. But kind of competing type things, no, i do not not aware of anything like that. And it, it's so d different too. We've all got different strategies, different collections. We're not just chasing the numbers. Um, is that something that um, the NDF Awards will provide for us and that they will hold up um, exemplar projects? Um, and they'll be, they will be uh, something we, we agree. Um, rather than, you know, our, our management or um, uh, a funding body or a, a standards body um, has ticked boxes, but this is one that the community has said this is top notch. Yes, please. <laughs> one more question. One more. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Eric Buama. Um, having listened to the various briefing of how your bar camps uh, went, I started asking. Um, do, do you all have the same topic to discuss or you have different topics? And if you had different topics, um, is there a way um, of sharing what you discussed with other bar camps in different regions? Because I realize that most of the problems you mentioned relates to uh, participation and low num numbers of people attending. And I like you have discussed, if you want more people to come, you don't have to do it, make it as one off thing. You should know your, the people within your group and make the meetings regular and usually not making it as formal so that people, usually within formal settings, people can't get the ideas to share, but when it is informal, ideas will come. So if the meetings are regular and you share among what is happening with um, South Island, North Island, and knowing what is happening with others will encourage the sharing of ideas. That's what I was thinking. I just, just thinking about the fact that we all did reports and some of us shared what we had 
gathered amongst ourselves. And I mean, maybe it's one of the things we could work on is pull out some of that stuff and say, these are the things we were talking about. These are the solutions we thought of and just figure that out something we could work over the next couple of months. I'll say that for me right now. Um, and also, I didn't say it at the beginning, but it, actually Otago did quite well with numbers. And it was the first time we reached over 30 people turning up and we had a very diverse group of people. And I think that was because I handed on communication to people who work in museum, people who are archivists, and just, and then had that, you don't have to come with a plan, an idea, but if you've got a question, you need to participate and just try to spend a lot of time explaining bar camps and talking to a lot of people, going, you should come to this thing. <laughs> and I think it's just a, it's, it's an ongoing process. Uh, so yeah, we have a base camp site that we use, so we can use that perhaps more guys to um, talk to each other about stuff. Um, we use, we often do collaborative notes online, so that's another way that we can share with each other and with the community at large and post the link to those notes as well. Um, and the meetup idea, well we can, you know, we can have those regularly throughout the year and also if the burden isn't on the ambassador necessarily to always be there because like as people say life gets in the way sometimes so if there's a small crew of people in an area that just sort of regularly turn up at least that gets things going I suppose. Those we, are some... we will, did anyone actually add, we, we had a shared document in case we missed it, didn't cover anything today. Has anyone actually added content to that yet? Okay, so we, we will share out via Twitter, but we'll, we'll write it up later on, the link to that, because like I said, I'm also going to throw the link to that quiz on it, and we'll make it an open, editable document so you can post your questions. But just for now, I suggest moving towards the Lumio um, forums to keep the conversations going. So that brings us to the end of this session but it doesn't mean the conversations end. Keep them going. If we're your ambassador, come and talk to us. Be our friends, help us out, especially if there's something you want us to do for you. And if you'd like to be an ambassador. Oh, and if you'd like to be an ambassador, Wellington, <coughs> Southland, and it's one of those things, it's, we won't just dump you in it. If someone takes over from me, I won't dump you in it. I'll mentor you through the process, but it's a building area of knowledge and let's see what we can make of it and help us make it as much as important as possible to you and your needs.